scotch, bourbon and fried. If they like a bottle, they'll tell you why. Hey everybody! Welcome to another episode of Trenny and C. I'm Trenny. This is C. This is Dr. Don. Dr. Don. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Don. Welcome, Dr. Don. Thanks for coming. Yeah. We appreciate you uh, spending some time with us on your probably very busy schedule. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure being in the bunker. Yeah, you know, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or our, we call it our favorite watering hole. Your favorite That's watering right. hole. That's right. That's okay. what it yes. is. Exactly. Um, so today we have the uh, award-winning Northern Border Collection in front of us here today. Yes, so from 2018, uh, and it's award winning at the Canadian Whiskey Awards uh, this year. It was fantastic, uh, some good hard work taken home. Can you tell us a little bit about those awards? Which ones you got? Yeah, we got awards for uh, the Pipe Creek 21 year. It's uh, the um, barrel finished in a European oak, it won a gold medal. Um, Excellent. Yes, the 35 year won the Connoisseur Whiskey of the Year for 2018. Is that with- two years in a row? Uh, won Whiskey of the Year in okay. 2017, 2018. We put a little bit of a different blend together. Okay. And it won the Connoisseur's Whiskey of the Year this year. Awesome. Um, another gold medal uh, uh, one was the Cash Strength Lot 40. Uh, as we know, that one is fantastic. Everybody yes, loves love it. Yeah. I love it. And the actual Canadian Whiskey Blend of the Year is the Gooderham and Warts 11 Souls. Wow. And uh, as of yesterday at the Canadian Whiskey Awards, uh, they uh, named, because of that, uh, me as the top... Uh, Canadian whiskey blender. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 So, uh, great well great accolades. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So yeah, maybe let's uh, pour a little bit of a dram Shrink here. And whiskey. And am, I, am I pouring? Yeah, sure. I think you're, yeah, yeah. you're in charge yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. You are actually the first ever uh, person that we've had on set. So yeah. we've done live streams with the... Uh, because well, the bunker's so hard to find. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, it was, well, yeah. All right, so here you go. Okay. Uh, that was the cork pop there. All right, so this is the 21-year-old Pike Creek uh, finished in uh, European oak casks. Uh, this is a fantastic whiskey. Mm. Love it. Yeah, so we recently did our um, <coughs> unboxings for... We did unboxing videos for uh, the Pike Creek, which I guess by the time this actual video is going to be released, that unboxing will be posted on our channel. Okay, but nice. for us, we truly unboxed it, what, like two weeks ago? Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's still I mean, new. you got to get a good chunk yeah, of it. Yeah, and you got to get to know, right? You gotta get to know. Right? <laughs> and then we did the same the same night we um, we opened the Gooderham and Warts. Oh, wow. And then <laughs> we, we, we've hung out a couple times since. It's not just <laughs> all one day. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> and then we previously had already uh, opened that one. Oh, the uh, lot fantastic, work, so. fantastic! This stuff all stays at your house, though, so maybe it's well. I don't know who's <laughs> drinking it. Uh, maybe it's the kids. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> oh, this one is a, just a lovely, lovely whiskey. It's a good one to start with here. It's it's the lightest ver- um, whiskey out of the four in front of us. Um, aged twenty one years and used Canadian yeah. whiskey barrels, which will give you a beautiful green apple character to that. Mm-hmm. And then the last year of its life, we put it into. Uh, French oak and hung- Hungarian oak casks, mm. uh, which is a little bit of a different mix. The uh, Hungarian oak will give you the nice caramel notes to it, the toffee notes to it, and the French oak uh, casks will certainly give you the vanilla notes to it. So it's an interesting combination uh, for the life of this whiskey, and it's a beautiful, beautiful whiskey. If you really want to understand how wood interacts with whiskey, go to this one. And yeah, so one. very much so. Did you say what was in those casks before, or were they new? Uh, the Hungarian oak and the and the uh, French oak cast, nothing was in it. Oh, okay. virgin oak. Okay, gotcha. So they are finished off in those casts. So a lot of your wood chemistry, I'm geeking out here. No, the no lot, yeah, yeah, a lot of the wood chemistry, a lot of the those compounds will come out in the first 100 to 200 days. So really, okay. uh, and then after that, you're just purely just getting the age uh, characteristics to that. And that's kind of exactly what we were kind of thinking when we tasted it for the first time. We thought like for a 21 year old, it has this kind of like youthful zest to it which is like kind of that new Those, kind of taste mm-hmm. which is like absolutely kind of finishing but, but if you kept it for 21 years in a new cast it would be the tannins would just be so acidic it would be mm-hmm. so that, that's why you finish kind of in those yep. new barrels okay just gives you that better balance and you do, do the wood sugars come out earlier on in early the early okay. early absolutely early yeah should we taste that yeah sure. we'll taste it. This, that's Cheers. a fantastic nose for this one mm. it's like velvety 
delicious fantastic. stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. But you're right, like this is one where like if you're a beginner and you want to learn about like the way that casks really interact with the whiskey, this one is yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it's right there. There's right just face. a little yeah. bit of rye in that. That's traditionally what Canadian whiskey's done. Um, and it gives you just a little bit of warmth. That's yeah. what the rye will do. But this is just roof right in front. That wood, mm. the wood sugars, the vanilla, the green apple character for such a uh, long aged whiskey. And it's really, stuff. it's really cool because you don't really see a lot of twenty one year old Canadian whiskeys. No, you, you got to think about a lot of there's a lot of new distilleries starting up there, but there's probably six or seven more mature Canadian whiskey distilleries out there, and certainly our ours would have that kind of inventory mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's, oh, it's delicious, delicious. And I, I can certainly see why uh, this one won a gold medal for this year at the two points. Yeah, absolutely, it's yeah. the sort of thing that is, these four are putting Canadian whiskey on the map again. Mm -hmm. You know, the scotch obviously is something that's very huge worldwide, but pe people, overlooked Canadian whiskey for quite a long time. I think these four whiskeys specifically are kind of bringing a, the newer generation to appreciate. And that's the, that was the intent when we first yeah. originally designed these uh, as whiskeys, just trying mm. to get that collector. All the other whiskey categories in the world do it. Mm. Uh, why not Canadian whiskey? We make fine quality products in Canada and let's, let's certainly showcase that. And such a range. Canada has such a range of flavors in their whiskey that yeah. why not take advantage of that oh. a little bit? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, because excellent. each one of these is so distinctly different, right? Yeah, they are. Um, do you guys remember a brand called J.P. Weiser's Red Letter? Oh, we never got to try it, I don't mm. think. But yeah, yeah I, I didn't see one back there. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Uh, I remember. I if, think we had it, it, if, you, if you remember Red Letter, I actually, if people that do remember that out there, I find this is a Red Letter on steroids. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, just because of those those barrel types that we selected. We will definitely have some viewers that will. I'm remember sure they will be. Red I'm Letter. Sure, yeah, yeah, I'm sure they will be. So, anyway, yeah. Cool. Um, well, I guess we should probably finish this last sip here. Or, <laughs> no, or, we're, we're not pouring it back. Yeah, we're drinking sure. it. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Shall we continue on? Let's Whis do it. Whiskey yeah. number two. Whiskey, whiskey number, number two. two. We'll do the uh, Gooder Hammer Warts 11 Souls whiskey here next. Mm -hmm. uh, won the uh, Canadian Whiskey Blend of the Year. So it's a fantastic uh, example of what blending can bring to the table mm -hmm. for ca Canadian whiskey. Thank you. There you go. And this one's at 49% of it? This is at 49%. What we sometimes like to do when we design whiskeys, perfect. we uh, will put uh, Easter eggs, we call them, in the, in the oh, whiskey. Oh, yeah. And I was going to ask, yeah, yeah. ask what you got. Yeah, you got for and really, the percentage is just a little bit bizarre. Odd. <laughs> so we're like, there's got to be something. There's bizarre. one I'll talk to you about later, but there's one that's on my radar that i got to ask you about. Why, why the strength of, of the whiskey yeah. is. So. So 49% alcohol was chosen because the, uh, the Gooderham and Warts building downtown Toronto, for those who are from the Toronto area, it's a nice triangular building. Uh, it's, it's address is 49 Wellington. Ah, so, uh, so we put okay. it at, so we call them Easter eggs. So we put this at 49%. Sure. Nice. Um, the reason why we call it the uh, Gooderham and Warts 11 Souls, uh, Gooderham himself uh, came into Canada in the 1830s and uh, it was treacherous times when you were coming overseas on, on wooden ships at that point and many people did not make the journey and uh, by the time Gooderham got, got into the harbor in Toronto um, there was 11 children that were orphans from it uh, and that hence that's where the word 11 souls was. So the challenge to, brought to me by the marketing, can you blend 11 different ingredients into this whiskey? Yeah. So, <laughs> like, I can. <laughs> I can uh, and the blenders that I work with uh, get upset. Uh, typically Canadian whiskeys, you're talking three, four, five, six components at most. Oh. Uh, this bringing in an 11 is as unusual, at least for our distillery. So we brought in 11 components and when we design recipes yeah. for Canadian whiskey, you design it around the type of grain. So that's in the recipe book in how it was distilled, the column still or pot still, the type of barrel. So new wood, yeah. used wood, bourbon barrels, um, that sort of thing. So you, you logically put them out. So we got 11 different things. We got rye, rye malt, barley, barley malt. Um, I got something in there called brissetto rye, which is very spicy uh, rye. So it's my first time using brissetto in this whiskey here. Uh, we've got corn, uh, we've got wheat, and then just a variety of different barrel types. And, and you, as you can notice it here, the complexity is just unreal. And I, I, I know my, my components very well. 
you know, I can kind of pick out all 11 of them as I go along. Yeah. So the complexity is just fantastic, mm -hmm. but it's balanced. That, that's what we're trying to do with this whiskey here. But that's interesting that they kind of, that marketing would present you with this challenge and then you would have to like yeah. go forth and, and determine like how to, you've got these guidelines. Now I have to, within those guidelines, I have to create an amazing whiskey. Like that's I, it, is, I, it, it, it is. It was an interesting project to work on it, quite honestly. And, uh, I mean, 11 different whiskeys, putting it together and making a nice balance of it. I mean, it is a team effort. It is a team mm -hmm. effort. There's marketing and sales and engineers and, and likewise. And I think we came at a, a very good place, uh, what we have here. Yeah. yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Amazing. You know, in Canada, stuff. what we say, mm. cheers A. Cheers A. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of A's in our video. <laughs> mm. And then, um, okay, it's four grand. I was going to say how many on the. Made. Flavor is just so uh, like mouth coating and rich and dense. Oh, there's almost like a I don't know if I could be way off here, but like a slight almost bourbon note to it. Well, that's that's kind of when you when you start into you're now getting to that getting so many small grains into it, you're mm -hmm. gonna perce perceptibly make it taste like a bourbon. And mm -hmm. I think anybody who likes the Goodham Awards franchise, to, I find are bourbon drinkers, mm, okay. and, and that's intentional by design is what we're trying to do is try to try to look for those who like enough small grain but yet not that corn sweetness yeah uh that's what we find with this franchise uh of the good hand awards so that's what we're trying to do cool. and so do you have barrels that are designated as like these will be good or hammond warts or could they turn out to be used in any of the they the can brands? Be turn out to be used to any of the okay. brands okay. Uh, the largest component in that is a 22 year old whiskey. Oh, wow. So 22 years ago, we didn't even have Goodrum Awards as a brand. Right, right. So we just ended up with some inventory. So when the challenge was to put 11 different whiskeys together, uh, what do you have left in inventory to be able to do that as a limited release? So that's kind of how, how it works. Well, I got enough of this so they can put it in there and, and uh, that's, that's usually how it works. Cool. Yeah. cool. Do you think like, so I guess for, for if you're making whiskey today, that's going to be aged for who knows how long i mean is that an interesting perspective that i'm i might not even work here when this is going to be put absolutely, out. absolutely like, absolutely uh um for me when i'm looking at whiskey uh as a master blender uh i want to be able to read what the consumers want so that's why going to the victoria whiskey fest or any other whiskey fest for that matter talking to consumers what do you like what do you want what do you see as trends Mm -hmm. um, I listen and that's what I'm trying to put away today. I, I'm predicting right now, 10 years from now, what consumers are looking for. And I'm working on those whiskeys as we speak. Yes. What, what might be looking into the crystal ball. And I look at that, that's, that's a master blender's responsibility, right? Is to be able to put down inventory what the next master blender is going to use. And if you think about it, if you really think about it, that's my retirement. Mm. Right. Right. If I don't put good quality whiskey today, the company's obviously making money. Yeah. Uh, they want to continue to make money. If I don't good, put good stuff away today, it, it's a little bit like a retirement. No, so you're package. investing in exactly. yourself. Yeah. 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 You think about it. Yeah. yeah. And, so and I don't cool. want to be known as the that guy, the master blender, <laughs> that puts away crappy spirits. So yeah. You know, for sure. Yeah. I don't want to be known as that. So oh. I'm constantly working at it. Constantly working at it. And uh, is there any like, is there any feedback or follow up with the guys that you know that that distilled? Say Weiser's thirty five. Like, do they know or are they around? That they are. They are around. And they know. They're probably they the free. first one in line to buy a bottle. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, do they know? Like, hey man, you kicked ass. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, that was great. I mean, but, man, this you know the uh, this stuff was distilled in 1981, 1982, and there's some of the distillers and and lab technicians and engineers still around, mm -hmm. and they actively go seek out bottles of the thirty five awesome. year. And uh, likewise, this was twenty two years ago. This I I look at this whiskey here because I started twenty two years ago. It was the year I started. Oh, well. 1996 was was the, one of the major components that went into this. It's crazy so, to think that, right? Like, like how old were you when? I, I didn't even have a computer. Course. I didn't even have email right? in 1996. Yeah. I'm just aging myself. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Cheers. Oh, that is beautiful. One thing. thing about this one too. Um, mm. This one was also like when we first opened it, and we were kind of like on the, working on the neck. It was very, like it was very woody and. Um, Oh, it should be like, like 22 years. Yeah, it was like a wet wood. Like it was an interesting, like it, right. it was yeah. very noticeable I, when we tried it. We were like, this is like, so when we talk about bourbon, a lot of times we talk about like 
musty, dusty bourbons. Like you've got your sweet bourbons and then you have these ones that are less sweet but more musty, dusty. That's what we call it anyway. We also call these things wisery. So those are our yeah. flavor, <laughs> those are flavor right? So, um, so. But this one has that kind of like musty woodiness to it that's really kind of cool and unique. I, I wish you get an opportunity, uh, I don't know, certainly uh, your audience too, to, to come and uh, visit me at a distillery because I put on a blending 101 exercise. Oh, okay. So I put out 50 different components. Uh, I put it on for an evening. I uh, charge $100 for it, and you come to learn to blend whiskey with mm-hmm. Dr. Don. Ooh. I've seen that on uh, yeah. Instagram. Oh, people yeah. people love it. I mean, I think what you're picking up is the malt. Mm. Oh, okay, I see. You, yeah. you get that wet wood feel to it, yeah. and anytime I start putting malt into whiskey, it gets a little bit of that, I, I kind of call it a vegetable or cauliflower okay, yeah. to it. But if you suddenly put it in there, it just adds a beautiful element to the whiskey that's... Uh, that's what, and anytime I have bourbons and stuff like that, and I can taste the, yeah, that's the malt. That's the malt. Absolutely. So I okay. think that's what you're probably okay. getting up. And, and that seemed to um, mellow when it kind of like got up down yeah. here a little bit. That's yeah, it will, because it vents off. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the compound that comes off a of malt is called dimethyl sulfide, and that certainly is very volatile. And every time you open up a bottle, you know, that's the malt. Yeah. yeah. But fantastic. Like well, that, that's uh, well, as, as it's going down, I like this one. This sorry, I'm geeking out in the audience. No, we love it. What this, <laughs> they this want the that. that yeah. want, they everyone okay. wants to hear because yeah. we can't give those answers. Yeah, I know, <laughs> you know, know, so. yeah. but I, I we believe that's no big words. <laughs> we don't know big words. Okay, so but no, like this one is like it grows on you even more mm-hmm. as it goes down. Uh, like, I had a few people approach me at the the awards uh, there last night, and they said, "Wow, that was just." Uh, one one of their favorite whiskeys of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's, 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 a, con- it's a contender. contender. Absolutely, uh, that's pretty. what you said actually in the unboxing. You said this is an early, early whiskey of the year. Yeah. I mean, it was in the we're top in eight. January. Yeah. Well, we're in January, and you're already talking about whiskey of the year for like well, these <laughs> these three here were in the top eight uh, uh, for the Canadian uh, whiskey. Yeah, so. yeah. awesome. This one won a gold medal too, but uh, but it's still I mean it's fantastic. What it speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. All um, right. We'll do okay. Let's move on. Water. <laughs> Which I'm not sure if it's even open. Uh, we opened it uh, today. Perfect. So it is awesome. uh, open it. So uh, we brought along here uh, the Wiser Certified Cork Pot here. Oh, Beauty. that's a good pot. It's such that, that is a good pot, <laughs> yes. Uh, this is the uh, JP Wiser Certified here. Uh, you know, you keenly brought your glass Thank over you there. Sir. Yes. I well, have memories at of the uh, at the last whiskey festival we went to, which is actually up in the Couch and Valley. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God, so, somebody had this bottle, one of the representatives, and we we tried it. We're like, this is such good whiskey, and um, we came back to try another little sample. It's like, uh, he's like, no, I don't think I so, guys. Don't think so, guys. <laughs> and it's not because we're. Like drunk, I don't think. I think he wanted <laughs> it was like, so. What well, happened was, yeah, keep it. the bottle yeah. got down to about halfway, and then it disappeared from the table. So we we're going uh, like, okay. hey, 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 where is that? that? <laughs> <laughs> he was hoarding. Yeah, he was well, hoarding. Well, one of the things with whiskey fest, you want to make sure your consumers get an opportunity to try. I think that's and I. And I know they like to bring the bottles from one fest to one fest to one fest. So right. in all likelihood, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was enough. taking it to the next fest. Yeah, he's probably taking it to the next fest. He gave everybody an opportunity sure. to, to try the Canadian whiskey beer. <laughs> there were no other fests. Okay. <laughs> he shall remain nameless. Yeah. Um, so this is the 2018 version, yeah, which was different than the 2017. How so? Uh, it, it's it's just a different lot of rye that I used. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, when you're making such a small volume of whiskey in terms of 500 cases, you're only selecting a barrel, few barrels at a time. So um, this was a different lot of rye that definitely went into this one. I personally like this one better than the 2017 really? version. Right. I like the 2018 version of this one much, much better. I find it to be a little bit more balanced in what I'm looking for in, for rye whiskeys, right? So it is a blend of lightly distilled uh, cane whiskey and uh, of corn and then and rye with it. So it is a blend and we landed at 50% ABV, so. 50%, just on the nose, you would never be able to tell. Yeah, it seems mild you know, than that, doesn't it? Because it? yeah. sometimes some well, whiskeys out there- Aging it for 35 years, smooths yeah, it out. It does smooth it out, yeah, for sure. So nice. But sometimes you get that blast of alcohol to the face and that's not. But I think, we, this, like just quickly, we gotta talk about the price of this one. like. This is an amazing price for a 35-year-old whiskey. Like, you do not find 
35 year old whiskey that's priced like this like this is so like and it's different everywhere in canada obviously. yeah i was gonna say I, I, mean, I, I don't know in your bunker here in bc <laughs> I gave it's it away. probably the, but it's probably the most expensive here. expensive yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. probably the most expensive here and it's still extremely reasonable for the age like yeah. a 35 year old scotch what are you paying for a 35 year old scotch oh, compared well, to this right like uh, cheapest I, a thousand kind of thing i saw a 40 year old scotch when i was uh, in europe this year and they were charging uh five thousand euro for it so yeah that's what i, I mean, mean like this is like it's, it's a normal person can buy this and that's what's amazing about it you know and i think that kind of goes back to what i was talking about earlier with that there's such good whiskey being produced in Canada now mm -hmm. yeah. through this lineup that people are grasping onto it and loving it, but they, it's also accessible, something that's yeah. Yeah. for the average person. I, I mean, the, so, the, they're great quality whiskeys. I know uh, there's some other whiskey brands that I know <clears> that we've developed and has won the world's top blended whiskeys and 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 yet, yet they're so affordable. I mean, everybody gets an opportunity to try it. Like you said, I, I think that's our thought because we did discuss it as a team. The, uh, you know, should we be charging hundreds and hundreds of dollars for it? But we, no, in fairness, we still want people to, to, to try it. Try it and get used to a good quality Canadian whiskey. And uh, you're certainly starting to see more and more of it in the Canadian whiskey mm -hmm. category. Uh, uh, people coming out with uh, different mashes and grains and highly aged. And uh, it's a fantastic category. I, I love being a blender in this category. Mm -hmm. And we've, like, we've by far purchased more, I guess it would be Corby's brand, um, than any other Canadian whiskey. Oh, for sure. I mean, based on our experience with it, like it's made us want to buy more. You know yeah, what I mean? I Whereas appreciate that. I mean, there's some, three, there's 350 people at our distillery that appreciate the support. They yeah, really, really yeah, do. Right. I mean, there's a lot of good men and women that work at our distillery that know what they're doing, and, and we've been there since 1857. And it's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of lot of good tradition here. We know how to make whiskey. Yeah, we clearly. training <laughs> clearly. Yes, training we don't really look forward to working for you guys. And yeah, around yeah. the distilleries. And is this where we talk about training and see small batch? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, shall we drink? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Mmm. I just had that balance. Mm. You get that nice little bit of a rye spice to it. Oh yeah, like, right away. Just such, such rounded edge. We always always talk about like rounded edges, like the the harsh whiskeys. They're a little bit rough, you know. Yeah, like yeah. you can taste the roughness kind of on the finish. Yeah. So it's so. Or there's a heat on the finish. Yeah, the right away I get the punch of the green apple. Uh, that's mm. that's how I describe it. Uh, that's the age. That's the age talking to you. It's a it's a green apple kind of flavor, and then the rye just comes in slowly, rolls across the tongue. I find, and then you get that warm finish through mm. the chest. To understand how much rye is in your whiskey, is how long you finish in your chest, right? Okay. Yeah. We like we like to call that the Canadian hug. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. So we got yeah. cold Canadian winters. So <laughs> you need hugs. You need yes. hugs. But that's a rye. We, the we know Canadian hug. whiskey is rye whiskey, right? And, and that's the rye. You can always tell how much uh, how much rye is blended in, in these mm. whiskeys here. Mm. Oh, that's yeah, a fantastic this, this whiskey. Delicious stuff. And the other thing is <clears> this one at fifty percent ABV, uh, at higher strength, the rye mm. character comes out more. And the woodier character, and that's that's really what what we wanted to emphasize here as well. Yeah, yeah I think up front you kind of get that rye and and the wood, and then it kind of the spice finishes. Yeah, at the end of it. Yeah. I'm still feeling it here. Yeah, it's nice. Really yeah, but when when I do tasting notes, well, I'll often uh, th uh, throw it there the length of finish. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's an often. So I'm sitting here, sitting here, and I'm I don't have a watch on, but it's probably been at least a minute. But right. I could still yeah. feel. Yeah. 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 Still I agree. Just, yeah. Right yeah. Here. yeah. For yeah. sure. Huh. When I was first kind of getting into whiskey, I would draw graphs of <laughs> oh, like, nice. like an up and down kind of like does it fade slow or fast? But I but it, but, it, but as it a blend, that's me. almost too smart. It made sense. You shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a blender, you think about that. I mean, a lot of people enjoy. It. Canada's a cold climate, like I said, and they really want that warm feeling on a cold winter's night mm -hmm. as you're watching the Canucks games. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good fire. The Canucks will leave you cold <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, depending on what team you choose, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's a, this is a fantastic. You're you're story. a what again? Are you? He's a Montreal. Canadian, fan. Montreal Canadian fan, fan, but I live in Ontario, so I mean it's uh, yeah yeah you're you know, in hostile I, territory. Yeah, right? I grew up in the '70s, and you know, the Montreal yeah, it's a good teams uh, yeah, gets into the '70s. So okay, cheers. Mm -hmm. And that's just something that's just been opened up. Like yeah, as awesome. it goes down, I think it 
Yeah, yeah I, I, I would think a lot of little that, like the volatile notes would be those green apple and that age characteristic. I think as the bottle would go down, I think that would just certainly go away. Um, the other thing we did with the, uh, the this year's version, it's non-chill filter. Mm. Okay. So, okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm trying to. I, I know that's what the consumers are looking for. Um, so they're looking for that's, that. Yeah, that's something we were going to talk about. Yeah, we had a question for you about that. So. Yeah, um, you get a little bit more of the mouth feel, I find it. You get a texture to it when mm -hmm. you get non non chill filter. Or, or oily to it. Oily yeah, that's it. what that's what we're looking for, and uh, and it just adds to the balance of the whiskey mm. overall. Yeah, excellent yeah. stuff. Great. Um, okay. Well, um, we already rinsed our glass. We. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're we can go on, move yeah. on to uh, whiskey number four for the Northern Border Collection. So this is the uh, 11 year uh, that you have here. So this is the second edition of this one. The first year was a 12 year. So we went out to select uh, different lots uh, of this whiskey. So it is a different batch. Um, when we put whiskeys away, it's at the high <clears throat> 50s marks. And this one ended up landing at 58.4% ABV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no special Easter egg for this one. This is where it was. This is where it was. Okay. This is where it was. So, yeah. So this is 100% rye and, whiskey. And this is another one like Guterham and, and Orts that has very specific fan base bases. Oh, they, yeah, they so love the lot 40, 40 or lot dead 40, set on yeah. Lot. There are, yeah, there's yeah. lot 40 fans out there, especially the cast drink lot 40. And really how this came down to the ocean. We just had um, consumers coming to our distillery and, and whiskey bloggers and media. And I, I would do my blending exercise and I would throw this pot so rye whiskey out to them. Well, why don't you do a cast drink version of that? And after many years of listening, listening to people, yeah, okay, well, we launched it, and it just, yeah. Off. I mean, I mean, this is again in, in the Canadian whiskey world. There's not too many cask strengths out there. So not that I'm aware of. Yeah, no, so not this that is, I'm aware. There this might is be a few for the people that yeah. like their their. Yeah, and, and I anticipate other distilleries will start doing it because mm -hmm. there obviously there's a demand to this whiskey, mm -hmm. and I would assume uh, you're you're going to see other Canadian whiskey producers put out cask strength whiskey, which is fantastic. I mean. You know, Canada's catching up to what the world is doing. I mean, it's but so Lot 40 as a brand, kind of, it went away for a minute, didn't it? It and did. It came back. Yeah, it did. So the original one, I was around for the original one. I was a young blender at the time <clears> in 1998. <throat> uh, the developer of the Lot 40 was a gentleman by the name of Mike Booth. So he okay. was the blender and he trained me along the way. Uh, he made it as a blend back in 1998. Um, and it was ill-timed. Back in 1998, mm -hmm. consumers were probably looking at more single malt scotches as the phase. And it just kind of sat in there. But it just was a little underling of Lot 40 through the years. And I kept running into people, where's Lot 40? Where's Lot 40? I remember you making Lot 40. So we re-released re it in uh, 2012. And I've made a few changes along the way. Mm -hmm. So uh, in 2012, uh, I basically didn't make it a blend anymore. So we went over to... Uh, all 100% rye uh, on that one. And the other thing is just doing what I did on my PhD. Uh, I started playing around with new whiskey casks, which was rare to see in Canadian whiskey. We moved it and shifted it over to brand new whiskey barrels. Okay. Because I thought it just balanced it with the nice rye spices uh, uh, at that time. And it did very well. Like, oh, a lot 40, a lot 40. And, and I thought it could make it better. And it, it's unusual for me to say this, but the original blend of it had 10% rye malt in it. And I actually pulled the malt out. Can we? Can you grab that bottle we have right there? <laughs> You're looking back. This there. is this is the this, the is, our, this is the yellow our, label. The yellow one. label. So so this is that's the malt one, one, right? That would have malt in it. Yes, yeah. that would so that's malt at the time. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. So if you would compare this one to the to today's with the green label mm -hmm. on it, you, I, it would be distinctively different, and you could see what malt is actually doing to your whiskey. Yeah, that's interesting. But should, when we pull probably it, buy another one of these. If you get a green one. If you can one. find one. I, well, the green. The green. You the can't green, find yeah. the green. Yeah. I look Just every time I go to a store for the yellow one. Yeah, I, I can't find it. Yeah, that'd be gone. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, might, you might have to go to some obscure store in uh, that doesn't Missouri sell Missouri or yeah, something exactly, like that right? uh, to be able to find uh, one of these labels. Now, I actually found one in Florida this summer. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, mm, that's cool. Florida and I. And I, right away when I had this, ah, yes, I, I can taste that taste. But yeah. we pulled it out, and that, and then the year we pulled it out was the year when the Canadian whiskey of the year. Yeah. Right. yeah so the, it added a flavor that just was not that right. validates it. Yeah, it did. It yeah. did. It did absolutely validate it. But uh, this is just an exceptional one, and I know if I'm working on the 2019 uh, Northern Border Collection. It's going to be a little bit different as well. Uh, and that's what we want to do. Make these into a little bit of a collector's kind of thing. Absolutely. That's Lot great. 40 is just so like, we call it, like our word for it is Jolly Ranchers. Like Jolly it Ranchers. tastes like it's got a watermelon Jolly Ranchers. Rancher kind of like, it's that zesty, 
seeing but a fruitiness and like yeah, I don't know almost sorry you like, yeah, had one of my whiskey wheels. But seriously, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting like a big kind of like caramel apple, but with the rye almost yeah. rye bread. You got Jolly Rancher on there? Yes. You know I don't got Jolly Rancher, <laughs> but if you look at the whiskey wheel, so I had it backwards there. But instead of looking at the whiskey wheel, you look at the fruity section. Yeast actually is the major driver of that component, mm, which okay. is interesting, right? Uh, is that Jolly Rancher? Uh, kind of a strawberry pineapple yeah. combination that you're feeling, but yeah. most people think uh, wood contributes the most um, flavor to whiskey. No, no, it's yeast. Okay, yeast, sure. and it's one of the struggles I do I do have with uh, that is to explain to consumers that the importance of yeast and how that provides flavor in the whiskeys. Mm. Um, it's harder for it, people it, to understand. It is very hard. People to understand. get wood, right, and like they, they, under, see, they see it. That's right. Well, and they yeah. see a rye field and a corn field. They understand grain. Yeah. They understand, but to understand what yeast is, I, the consumers is not there yet. Try to go down down your local pub and bar, sit on the corner bar still, and start talking yeast with the person there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a turn off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have this yeast strain from the eighteen twenties. You should try this. I though. got the original ones from nineteen thirties. So really? Yeah, the, the Corbys, Hiram Walkers, uh, Third Hamlet Warts, all in frozen culture. Wow. My dream someday, because my first career really was in microbiology. That's why I got hired into this business. Is to be able to make all these. Let's let's say I made lot forty from yeast strains from Corby, yeast strain from Corby. How would it taste different? Yeah. I think it would be bizarre, oh, unusual, yeah. I, but I, to, to explain to, to this audience that what yeast actually and how it impacts, I hope someday we can see it. It's, uh, maybe that's my career, idea. maybe that's, that's a legacy I hand on to But you know what, there's well, a, I hope so because that's something yeah. that could really take off with people. There's that's an interesting do. core group of our audience that is super knowledgeable and yeah. they, they get like, we get comments. That's the one percent though. Yeah, yeah, I that's guess the one percent. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's that's usually what I find when we when we talk about yeast. That is how many people really understand it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair well, I, I work for a brewery, and uh, the the master brewer there, he if you let him, <laughs> he'll talk your ear off about yeast strains. Well, that yeah, yeah, and I right? will too. I mean. yeah, that, that's <laughs> the same kind of thing where he's, he was talking about he got a yeast strain strain from Germany that from like the early 1900s and blah 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 yeah like, yeah it's, it's a legacy it's kind of like, like, yeah, like cool the, the beer tastes pretty good what's it, yeah what's it <laughs> taste like <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh let's let's partake cheers yeah. eh all right yeah. mm. the percentage is perfect on this it is because it's not so overpowering but it has a vaporizing like we always talk about like I, it almost I, feels like it's evaporating in your mouth, which is fantastic. It's great it's distilling in your mouth, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah. But, but really, really, it's distilling. Yeah. It is evaporating, and then it condenses again. That sometimes when you get it up in the nasal passages, it just recondenses and yeah. yeah. You get a distillery in a mouth. Yeah. You learn something every day. Get some like copper teeth. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, dear. I'm busy distilling. <laughs> That one's never um, going to end on your show. Yeah, 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 no. yeah we're going to work with that now. Yeah. Every episode. Uh, uh, awesome. Uh, well, we just want to thank you for yeah. bringing and coming and talking about all the yeah. amazing, delicious whiskey you've been creating over the last little while. So, uh, it's a pleasure being here, guy. I mean, it's finally, finally good to go to the Trending Seed Bunker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. You're the first person to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, great. Well, cheers. Cheers. And thank you. And we'll... Uh, Move on to the next video here for next time, right. yes. All right. Granny and C, drinking whiskey, describing all the flavors for you and me. Irish, scotch, bourbon, and rye. If they like a bottle, they'll tell you why. Subscribe on YouTube.